Jason, when you see the excitement on Rasmus's face and things like what Bill brought up about the whole second day of the draft, he's there, still wearing his jersey, how much does that make you smile to know he really genuinely wants to be here and wants to be part of this? I haven't really stopped smiling since Friday. So, um, no, it's and it's what I mentioned in the press conference. You, you When you watch a player on the ice and get you really excited, and then you go through the interview process and you get to know this player and just his, his, his personality and how much passion he has for the game and for his family, it, it gives you a lot of comfort in, in making the selection. And we've talked a lot about it, people. We want, if we're going to change things in Buffalo, we have to have players who are excited about being in Buffalo want to be a part of our community here and uh, um, you've seen that with some of our core guys, what they do within the community, it's, it's extremely impressive and Rasmus wants to be a part of that he's extremely excited about coming to Buffalo, his entire family is excited about being in Buffalo and it's genuine when he talks about how excited he is and you've said that this is just the first step, what do you want to accomplish in these next couple weeks, qualifying offers free agency, everything that's involved yeah, we'll be going through uh, qualifying offers here uh, today. We we, uh, we won't be qualifying Robin, as we've mentioned before. We won't be qualifying uh, Victor Antipin, and we won't be fu- qualifying uh, Scott Wilson. Uh, now, uh, you know, Scott, the Scott Wilson situation is just mainly due to salary arbitration. Uh, we're very hopeful that uh, uh, we can get a contract in place with him um, come July 1st. As for Sam Reinhardt, I'm assuming that means you're qualifying him. Do you have anything to tell us at this point? No, nope, it's just, uh, look, uh, we've obviously had a ton of, a lot of communication with Craig Oster, uh, Sam's representative. Um, you know, it was, with everything going on, uh, Craig also obviously represents Rasmus Dahlin. So with everything going on, we've just talked about uh, beginning those negotiations later on this summer, but everything's extremely positive from that standpoint. Jason, when, when it comes to uh, the culture and you're getting new guys coming into this locker room, and there were there was talk last season. Ryan O'Reilly, O'Reilly mentioned it. How do you brace them, or how? I mean, you, you talk about changing the culture. Every, everything's got to change. What concerns or reservations do you have with these young kids going into that locker room, where there's the acknowledgement that a losing culture may have seeped in there? For, parts of last season? Well, I think it's a scenario where a lot of these young kids that we're bringing into the organization right now, whether it's kids who are coming up from Rochester, whether it's a Casey Middlestat, whether it's Rasmus, like, we're not expecting them to lead our room, but we're expecting them to bring their positive at- attributes, their, their competitiveness to that group. And I think what it's done to, for, for our veteran leaders, and just talking through to some of our veteran players on our team right now, they're excited about that. They, they understand that the talent level is increasing with our team. Um, they understand now the communication, they know what Phil's looking for uh, throughout the entire season. Um, so there's, a bit, there's a better feel from that standpoint. So, I, you know, yeah, we challenged a lot of players up in the season to, to do different things, but then it's up to us to hold our end of the bargain of trying to bring more better players and more talent to, to help them and associate with these guys. And uh, Rasmus, Casey Middlestad, these young players get our veteran players excited. And I think you saw that even in this year when a guy like Brendan Gooley came up, there was like, wow, this, this guy adds another dimension to our back end. And that's what we're trying to do right now throughout the summer. What's your read on Phil in terms of he didn't have the weapons he needed last year and this is the ultimate weapon for the way he wants to play? It, it's what's got us very excited about just exactly what you talked about. Um, He's a very talented player, Rasmus, but if you look at how Phil would like to play, how Phil's teams were, was a part of the teams in Nashville, how they played, it mimics exactly how Rasmus is. And he comes around the net. One of his best attributes is his ability to find when something's taken away, what's the second, what's the third, fourth option out there. And what I really like about his game is it's not always him leading the rush. He's looking to move the puck up to his forwards. And I think that's what we have to do a better job at. We feel we have some talented centermen. We have to get the puck up to them quicker. So, um, yeah. As you probably saw in some of the articles before, Phil was very excited about Rasmus possibly joining our organization, <laughs> and uh, nothing's changed at all. And uh, and that's what I like about not only Phil but our entire coaching group. You, they, they're excited about working with these young guys. I thought our coaches in Rochester did a very nice job last year with the development of a young player like Brennan Gooley. The communication from the Rochester coaches up to Buffalo coaches have really got our coaches excited about some of this young talent that's coming in through our organization right now. You have some interesting new challenges because you have Rasmus Dalian in your team. You are now 
much more of an international story in hockey. How does that just change the whole dynamic of the organization? Things like regular season games that happen a lot more international media around. This makes you a different organization, doesn't it? Well, I think all that comes to, like, it's the beauty of our game right now. It's an international game. You look at just how many Swedish defensemen not only we drafted, but the entire NHL drafted. Um, it's uh, it's an exciting time, and it seems like now with social media and everything, you know, whether uh, something happens exciting in Russia, Czech Republic, Finland, Sweden, it goes global so quickly. And I think that's it's just great news for our sport. And uh, I think you saw with Rasmus comments there, he there's a comfort level with having maybe fellow Swedes on the team. But you saw with this, he's very comfortable interact with North Americans, very interacting with everybody in his in his in his locker room, and uh, you know I think in my communication with him, I think his English is excellent. It's but it's continues something that he can, wants to continue to work on, and I think he understands that balance of coming over and instead of being worried about making adjustments in North America, he's excited about making this adjustment in North America, and we talked to him about his living arrangements, and, and it tells tells us he's been on his own since age 15. It's something that. I know I probably couldn't handle, but he's a very mature individual there. Jason, is, is Pilot a NHL ready defenseman now, or will he need some developing in, in the minors? He he'll need some time. Uh, that we've talked, and that's what we've talked to him about. Now we're going to certainly give him a lot of an opportunity uh, in training camp just to get some experience, both through rookie tournament and preseason games, and just you know, with him being over here already for development camp, he's coming in great shape and. Uh, um, I, he, he's ahead of the, the curve type of thing, just playing in the SHL and having a very successful year last year. But um, it's not of a situation where we're looking for him to, to make our team right your training camp. We certainly hope that he pushes some people. Um, but our goal is, hey, they'll start in Rochester and then move up from there. Rasmus is 26 and you said no buyouts. What's the plan for Molson? Uh, it's a situation where we've been in touch with Matt throughout this entire process. I had another uh, communication with him yesterday. Um, like we're still, we'll work with him to see, try to find, the, just like we did last year, to try and sort of the best all, you know, spot for him moving forward. And we'll continue to look at different opportunities if something materializes on the trade front. But uh, uh, he won't be back with our group for next year. How do you expect to uh, tweak the top six or nine forwards to get more scoring? Do you that's sense it'll be through trades or free agents? Well, I think right now that's it's a little hard to predict. Uh, I th you have to look at both avenues. And uh, obviously for you to see it's going to happen. You'll understand about that in the next week or so here. Um, but I think with the trade, you know, everyone wants to have their team set in stone on July 1st or, or July 2nd. That doesn't happen. And um, what we're excited about is, yeah, he, we, it was just brought about what I like Lawrence Pilot. Well, let's see how he does in training camp. Let's see where he's at uh, from making the adjustment to North America. And then there's always that opportunity to make trades to him. Uh, to add to our form later on in the season. And it's even with just a numbers game, we got so many defense at this point. Yeah, and, and to be honest, we were really impressed with Victor. I know things didn't go maybe as well as he wanted on the ice, but off the ice, this, he fit in with our locker room extremely well. He worked, ex he was a pl player that came over that really struggled Lingo's language, did all the lessons, and, and I, I do hope, I know he's still looking to at opportunities here in North America, and I really hope it materializes for him. Just to clarify with Scott, and just that 